Hey guys, Kenneth here and welcome to my movie corner and today I decided to give you somewhat of an early review, I mean a late review, why, why would I say early review, like I wish I could give you an early review, yeah, a late review and that is on the movie Morbius, yes this movie is directed by Daniel Espinosa and it stars Jared Leto, Matt Smith, Adria Arjona, Jared Harris and Tyrese Gibson and this movie is the third installment in the Sony Spider-Man universe or the Sony universe of Marvel characters as it was formerly known and this is based on the Marvel anti-hero Morbius. Um, he, as far as Morbius goes, I don't have that much of a history. I know that he was in the 90s Spider-Man show but other than that I don't know that much. I've been interested in getting some of his comics because he does have some comics that I do want to read that because I've heard he's a very interesting character but yeah when it comes to the Sony Marvel Universe I would say I enjoyed some of them like for example I like both Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage sure both are very flawed movies but I have a lot of fun watching them and I actually did a review for both Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage if you want to check them out the link will be right there but yeah when it comes to more views, I guess I was interested because I like when they make comic book movies about characters who aren't that well known, like that's how the MCU started. Like, Aside from Hulk, not a lot of people knew about um, Iron Man or Thor, some people knew about Captain America, but when the MCU started nobody knew who Iron Man or Thor were or nobody knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy were. So, and after those, they received their movies, they became kind of A-list Marvel characters. So I was like, you know what? I'm glad that Sony is doing this with one of the characters that they own because Morbius, like I said, is not a very popular Marvel character. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a, the benefit of the doubt just because I want to see a lesser known Marvel character get his own movie. And at first I was kind of excited to see it. Um, I thought the first trailer was solid enough. I was kind of heartbroken when it was delayed the first time. I understand because of the pandemic this movie had to be delayed. So I was like, you know what? Maybe this will be worth the wait. Then the then this movie kept getting delayed, delayed, and delayed to the point where I was like, this is never going to come out. And if it comes out, this is going to be horrible. And yeah, I saw the reviews and how brutal they were and I was like <laughs> I kind of want to see it just to see how bad it is I was gonna see it like a couple of weeks ago when it came out when it came out and the reason I didn't was because I was really busy and I was gonna see it in Mexico with my uncle but he ended up backing out away at the last minute and the movie w was only seen in Spanish and as you guys know I don't really like seeing movies in Spanish but yeah I decided to take a bus to, to another city and I decided you know what let's decide let's watch a movie since I there was a movie theater near the, the place I went and I decided to see more views mainly out of morbid curiosity and now that I've seen this movie I can report is really bad um is it as bad as something like Batman and Robin or Catwoman? Not really. Like, I would even take this over the 2017 Justice League movie. But this is like in the same level as probably Jonah Hex or The Eternals. This is pretty bad. Um, I don't know how to describe it. I, I don't have really that much words to describe the movie other than it sucked. No pun intended. This is bad comedy. Let's get to the positives, because yes, there are positives for more views. And I think the first positive would be for what they were given, the performances of the cast were solid enough. Um, credit where credit is due, I do think Jared Leto did a good job playing more views. Um, I mean, I'm not a huge Jared Leto fan. I hated his version of and of Joker and Suicide Squad. Are you sweet talking me? Uh, uh, uh. And 
Luffy does seem like a very sketchy person at best. To some people, he's worse than sketchy. But yeah. I was like, okay, Jared Leto is being le more restrained than with Joker. That's what I like. And, you know, he is more restrained than he was in Suicide Squad, which is something I appreciate. And you could tell that there was some passion that Jared Leto had towards the character, how he talked about, oh, how honored he was to play the character, even though, like, that could have been PR bullshit. But, like I said, for what he, for, for what he is given, he does a good job. Also, Matt Smith, similar to Leto, for what he is given, he does what he can and there is one scene like I'm gonna spoil the shit out of this movie there's one scene where he starts dancing and I was just I laughed my ass off I was like if the movie had more scenes like that I would have loved it but yeah that scene where he starts dancing that made him the show stealer and the side cast of Adria Arjona or Jared Harris or Tyrese Gibson were there, but you know, they did what they could. Another positive I would say is the fact that this has a different tone from the Venom movies. Like the Venom movies have a very silly and goofy tone. This one is trying to be more serious, more darker, and you know, I'm glad that they're doing something to differ to differentiate Morpheus from the Venom movies, which I was like, okay, that's somewhat of a neat touch. And despite this being in the same universe as Venom, this is very newcomer friendly. Like you don't really need to watch the, the two Venom movies to understand the world and what is going on. You do need to see Spider-Man Homecoming, I mean, Spider-Man No Way Home for the post credit scene and probably Spider-Man Homecoming to understand who the character was, who that character they introduced was, but I'll get to that later. But yeah, it is very newcomer friendly for the ones who just got into the Sony universe of Marvel characters or the Sony Spider-Man verse, which I understand this universe is fairly young. They have like three movies in and this movie was meant to be the second in that universe. So I understand why they wanted to have something more for the newcomers like oh you don't need to see venom to understand what's going on and it's something i appreciate like in the mcu it feels like if you want to get into the mcu now you have to see like two or three different mcu movies to understand the world but here you don't need to see the other venom movies maybe if this universe continues after this that'll change and you'll have to see at least one or two different movies in this universe to understand the story but for the most part, I do like that they kept the movie fairly standalone. And the last positive I would say is, um, I feel like there is a good movie buried below this shit. Because the story about a scientist who has been ill for, for most of his life and he's trying to get a cure, but once he gets a cure, he realizes it is a curse and you know he he now has to you know kill people even though that is everything that he stands against and he is trying to you know suppress the urge that could have been a very good story that could have been like a very good character study about someone who whose career was about saving lives but now he's forced to take lives and you know that is something like if they had more competent writers I feel like this could have been a very good story and it's the same story from the comics so maybe I should read the comics maybe the character is more compelling there but I did like the concept that they went with Morbius the execution uh... now as for the negatives I'll just get the big one out of the way the writing is abysmal um, this I know the Venom movies were not like very well written movies like a lot of Marvel movies aren't basically these profound screenplays, but you know, they're still very good screenplays for a superhero movie. This one just feels like they rushed the screenplay. 
they rushed it from concept to production and they basically had like what three weeks to write a screenplay that's how the screenplay feels because some of the lines are abysmal like when you hear some lines you're like some a professional screenwriter wrote that and like I said this script feels like they didn't have that much time to do revisions or fix the screenplay and you know that could be blamed to Sony for wanting to rush this but here's the thing if you are making uh, a movie that is a hundred million you could put a lot more effort into your screenplays another big negative would be the effects are garbage especially the effects in Morbius and Myla's faces I will say this, if the movie was more silly and more cartoonish, maybe those effects would have worked, but since the movie is, you're, you're, you have to take the movie seriously, the way their faces look, how silly they look, they just don't feel right for the tone. And you could definitely tell it's CGI, and I understand for some effects you need CGI, but for the effect in Morbius' face, they could have gone with makeup. That would have been, I know, probably more expensive, but not as expensive as CGI. But yeah, some of the special effects, you can understand that this had a huge budget dip from the Venom movies because, holy shit, some of them, there's one scene with a CGI mice, mouse that I was just like, that looks bad. And for the many delays this movie had, I'm like, couldn't they just fix some of the bad CGI? Another negative, the characters. Um, these are the most paper-thin characters you could think of. The thing I love about the Venom movies was Tom Hardy as Venom and Eddie Brock and Venom as characters. They both were very entertaining characters, probably not the most compelling characters ever written. But they were very entertaining. You like them as characters, and you kind of root for them. In Morbius, while Jared Leto gives a good performance, I can't say I rooted for him or cared for him. Sure, they try to make him sympathetic with this cure, but the way he's written, how they go from him as him sick to him as a vampire, it's just like this. In Venom, you could at least get to know Eddie a bit as a character. You get to spend some time with him before he bonds with the Venom symbiote. And with some of the MCU, you get to know these characters a bit better than before they become the superheroes. But here, they're just like, oh, he's sick. Now he is the vampire. And I didn't like the villain because... They basically try to make him like Morbius, where he's just desperate, but then he takes a cure and starts just killing people, and I understand they wanted him to be like the worst vampire, but to me, I was like, it would have been more interesting if there was a conflict, like at first he, like Milo is conflicted from, about killing innocents, but then he's like, oh, they, they don't deserve to live, and I do. But he's like, oh, I kill that peep, I kill that guy, I'm, that's cool, like, you know, I'm evil. And there is one point in the final battle where Morbius tells Milo, Milo, this isn't you, and I'm like, um, I didn't know him that well as a character to know if that isn't him and that's just the power corrupting him. They did the same with Ant-Man, like, Marvel Studios did the same with Ant-Man where the villain where, you know, Hope says to the villain, Darren, this isn't you, it's just the thing that's corrupting you, but I'm like, I didn't know that guy as a character to know if that was him. That's the same with Milo. I didn't know this, him as a character to know that if this was his true self or he was just corrupted by the power he had. And here's the thing. They had a scene where... They make you believe that Morbius killed an innocent person. And honestly, I was like, okay, that's somewhat of an interesting twist. Like, oh, maybe one of, in one of his urges, Morbius accidentally killed an innocent person. 
and then he has to deal with it, but they're like, no, Milo killed that guy. And yeah. Also, Tyrese Gibson and his partner. What the hell were they doing in the movie? Like, they could have been taken out of the movie and it would have been mostly the same. They contribute they contributed nothing to the plot. And yeah, the action sucked. Like, a lot of the action is just very poorly made slow-mo. And there's some scenes that you couldn't even tell what was going on. And here's the thing. There are scenes that I'm like, this should have gone for an R because there's a scene where Morbius literally slit someone's throat. No blood. I'm like, if you wanted to go like, if you wanted to do that, like, go for it. Because you know how silly a throat slit looks without blood? It just looks pretty fucking silly. And yeah, just similar to the Venom movies, I feel like this would have been better if they went for an R rating. And let's talk about the post credits scene. That's... I don't blame er anyone for saying this is one of the worst post credit scenes ever. Like, it's not as bad as, like, the post credit scene in Captain Marvel where it's basically Goose puking up the Tesseract. But here, it just breaks the rules for set up in Spider-Man No Way Home. Remember when I said you needed to see Spider-Man No Way Home to understand part of this movie? And that is with the post credit scene. So in the post credit scene, the vulture gets af gets teleported to the Sony Spider-Man universe, the Venomverse, as you like to call it, where he gets transported into that universe after, you know, the spell of Doctor Strange, which I'm like, huh? Because it would have made sense if, since I know they showed Michael Keaton in the in the first trailer, so I was like, it could have made sense if this Adrian Toomes that we see in Morbius was somewhat of a variant from the MCU's Vulture, but what they went with just makes the whole thing confusing, and I, could, I don't know if they reshot his scenes to fit with Spider-Man No Way Home, but it just makes the whole thing confusing. And they basically set up a, a Sinister Six movie, which I don't know if it will happen. I know it's been in development for so long, who, so who knows if that Sinister Six will happen, but they do tease up that Morbius will return, considering this movie, if this movie makes enough to even guarantee a sequel, because given how this movie is, has been received, I. I doubt we'll ever, we'll ever see Morbius again, and I'm just gonna say this. If they decide to, to bring Morbius again, please hire Joaquin Phoenix. Like, you know, we went from this to this, so maybe Joaquin Phoenix could do Morbius justice. Oh, and bring Todd Phillips, by the way. <laughs> so in conclusion, is Morbius the worst comic book movie I've ever seen? No, like I said, I would take X-Men Origins Wolverine or Justice League over this one, but it's still pretty bad. I don't recommend it. The only way I recommend this movie is once it hits Netflix. That's the only reason why you should watch this movie when it hits Netflix. There's no reason why you need to pay for this movie. Just wait till it's on Netflix. So yeah, I'm gonna give more views a 2 out of 10. Please don't see it. At least I have Across the Spider-Verse to look forward this year. Oh, god damn it! Yeah. You know, it kind of sucks that this is the only Sony Marvel movie we're gonna get this year. But, you know what? At least we finally got more views. For better or worse. <sighs> so yeah, those were my thoughts on the movie Morbius. Let me know down in the comments. Did you like this movie? Did you hate this movie? Or here's a question. What is your favorite Jared Leto performance? I think mine would be Blade Runner 2049. I think he did a good job in that movie. But let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on my social media. The links are in the description. 
And tomorrow I'm gonna give you a review for Sonic 2, a late review, and hopefully next week I can give you a review for the Northmen, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day, Kenneth out.